Welcome to the beginning of the new church year this Sunday as we begin Advent with the first Sunday in Advent. Let us open our worship service this morning with the singing of our first hymn, The Advent of Our King. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, December 3rd, 2023, worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in this morning's broadcast are Dennis Knauer, Linda McEwen, and Terry Biggs. Our organist is Nancy Gunterman, and our opening hymn is number 331, The Advent of Our King, hymn number 331, found in the Lutheran Service Book. Ron and Janet Estel are sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God and thanksgiving for their many blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if if we we confess confess our our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. 
Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 64th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you are angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us. You have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. the catechetical review. In regards to the sacrament of the altar, what is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. The epistle reading from 1 Corinthians, the thir- first chapter beginning at the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternity. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves his home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the singing of our hymn. The hymn of the day is hymn number 350, Come Thou Precious Ransom Come. Hymn number 350, found in the Lutheran Service Book. The sermon text is taken from today's 
Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not our iniquity forever. Thus far the words of our text. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we look at this text from Isaiah, uh, nestled, nestled in here, round uh, uh, verse 5, you are angry and we sinned, in our sins we have been a long time. Shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, like a polluted garment. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf. There's no one who calls upon your name who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. We find a people in this text, uh, the prophet speaking on behalf of the people, we find a people who are afraid. A people who are afraid that because of their sins, God has abandoned them. And they give an impassioned plea to God, to not be angry with them, to relent and remember that he is their God and that they are his people. We hear a cry of a people who long for the old days, the days of the good times when God manifested himself, you know, um, when you came down on the mountains and the twigs burned up and the water boiled, you know, this vision, not vision, but the expression of the power and might of God. And the nation flourished. But as it often happens, the people got complacent. They kind of accepted the status quo that God was always there with them. They took God and his blessings for granted. The kings remembered God's promises. They banked on the fact that they were God's people and nothing would ever go wrong. Nothing would ever happen to them. They said, we are the people of God. We have a temple. We have this. We have that. We have the other things. And yet, the kings forgot to keep their part of the covenant, to keep God's statutes, and to walk in the ways of the Lord. We of the Christian church, I think, often feel that way. Now, what way is that? We feel as if things are falling apart around us. We often feel, I think, as if society is crumbling all around us. I think we fear that the nation will fall and crumble due to its decaying moral fiber. On the other hand, we'd, on one hand, we'd like to point out Psalm 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his heritage. And I think we get afraid What's going to happen when we have turned our back on God? What's going to happen to the country when we turn our back on our Lord and our Creator and we become uh, a, a secular, completely secular, ungodly nation with the Christian church falling into disfavor and falling by the wayside? But then again, there's the other hand uh, that people probably fall into too. Even we as Christians do. We are apt to trust in our government. We are apt to trust in our technology and our military power. Yes, we have these things. It will secure the peace for us. It will secure us as a nation in a good first world living standard. We know though that without the Lord as our protector, the nation will fall. And that makes us afraid, it makes us fearful. As is later recorded in Psalm 33, the king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered through his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them from famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. The Lord is our hope. The Lord is our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. 
Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as our hope is in you. Now, unlike ancient Israel, the United States is not a theocracy. It's church and state are not blended together. They are not one entity. The body of Christ, the Christian church on earth, that is, you and I as Christians, are to be salt and light and leaven to the culture around us. We are to influence our culture with a godly morality. But what do we see around us? A society that is rapidly deteriorating. A society rotting from the inside out. We've watched crowds in our streets lately openly celebrate mass murder and terrorism. Intellectuals who are so paralyzed with parsing everything out that they either willfully or out of fear are unable to call evil things evil. Some even refuse to believe, some in our culture even refuse to believe that there's such a thing as good or evil or even truth, labeling them simply as opinions or words, claiming that you have your truth and you have your truth and I have my truth, but there's no such thing as the truth directly opposed to our God who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Even worse, we find that now and again, some have this twisted need to call evil things as if they are good. Abortion on demand, good. Of course, they call it the sanitized name of the sanitized name of reproductive health care. Marriage and family, one man, one woman, husband and wife raising their children together. Deemed patriarchal oppression and labeled as bad. Contemporary society is just like we read in Romans chapter 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. They become futile in their thinking, their foolish hearts are darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves." Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up. For this reason, right? For pushing back and rejecting God. For throwing God into the gutter. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And men likewise gave up natural relations for relations with each other and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do those things that ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy and murder and strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, instigators of evil, disobedient to parents. Foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know that God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. The list could go on and on and on and on. And we are rightly worried not only about chastisement from God, but also punishment from God. For St. Paul also writes, for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, 
there will be wrath and fury. Wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil. And sadly and unfortunately, as is often the case, when this comes to fruition, even the righteousness are caught up in the way righteous are caught up in the wave of evil. They are caught up along with the unrighteous in the punishment of a people who have turned their back on God Almighty. When God let loose his, lets loose his wrath, even the believers will be hungry. Even the believers will perish. Yes, we are concerned. It's scary. And we take our cue from Isaiah. We of the Christian church, what are we to do? We are to lead the nation in repentance and faith. As Isaiah writes, in our sins, we have been for a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. You know, white is usually used to display the righteousness of God, purity and holiness. And as I've said before, when Isaiah speaks of a polluted garment, in your mind you have to take the handkerchief, the white handkerchief, and imagine that you've got a bloody nose and you're shoving it up to soak up and sop up all the blood and see what comes out and after that garment looks like. All our righteousness is like that garment. That garment. That's what it looks like in God's eyes without faith in Jesus Christ. Without trust in our Lord Jesus for our salvation and the forgiveness of our sins. We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Isaiah says, in a little bit of hyperbole, there is no one who calls on your name, no, not even one. There's not one who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us. You have made us melt in the hand of your iniquities, our iniquities. It's not a pretty picture, but it's true. We have sinned in so many and various ways, even to the point of trying to take advantage of God's kindness. I can do what I want all week. I'll just go to church and get forgiven on Sunday. Oh, God won't get upset with me. It's all over the place. And what do we do? We repent and we cry out. We cry out to God, but, but now, oh God, we are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord, and remember not our iniquity forever. Behold, please look we cry out. We are your people. Lord, have mercy upon us. Bless your people. Save your heritage. Make us a blessing to the nation. And remember that you have made humanity, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. As we step off into the season of Advent, at the beginning of Advent, we remember the second coming of Jesus Christ. We remember, we long for it, but when he comes, it will not be a pleasant event to the unbelievers. Stars will fall from the skies. Darkness will overtake the world. Every eye will see, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, willingly or unwillingly, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
So in Advent, we cry out for mercy. And yet, on the other hand, we also remember that mercy has been given to us. And once again, at the beginning of this church year, we begin our path to the manger, to the birth of the Messiah. And the birth of the Messiah is not about a cutesy, snuggly little baby. It's about a Savior, Jesus, God with us, the one who was born to die so that you and I might live. Jesus, he is God remembering us. He is the fulfillment of God's promises. Jesus is God with us. Jesus is God keeping the promise we so fervently pray for. And so as we step off into the new church year, as we march into Advent, let us repent of our sins, cry out to God for forgiveness, proclaim Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world, and look not just for his first Advent in remembrance, but his second Advent in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and your minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our common Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in in one one God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the the only begotten begotten Son of God, God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you are the potter. We are the clay. Hear us as we intercede for our nation. Cleanse us, O Lord, and make your church fit vessels for your use. As the potter, we implore you, do not dash us to pieces. Rather, remold and shape your church to be intercessors and preachers of right morality, of repentance and faith. Forgive our national sins. Turn our hearts back to truth and preserve us from downfall. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, hear our prayers for our civil leaders, for our president, our Congress, our governor, and state legislature, that they lead us rightly, not in the pursuit of earthly gain, but to serve their fellow citizens so that you would be pleased with their actions. Preserve them, O Lord, from wicked and sinful ambition and governance that is contrary to your will. We also pray for the leaders of our synod, 
that they be strong and bold preachers of righteousness. Bless President Harrison with leadership skills and a pastor's heart, not only for the synod, but for all people of the world who long for the gospel truth so that many would hear and be saved for eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Jesus, as we approach your table this day to receive your holy body and blood, grant that we approach repenting of our sins and willing to forgive our neighbor. Also grant that we approach trusting your word, that here you give us your true body and blood for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, O Lord, that you have answered our prayers with a yes, that as we have requested safe travels for our loved ones this past week, you have granted that prayer. We also ask that you would hear our prayers for those who are sick, for Ray and Duke, Betty, Lois, and Donna, Linda, indeed all those who we name in our hearts and those who you know about but we don't. Answer their prayers with what is best for their circumstances and for them giving them in best circumstances for them, giving them the grace to say, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Most gracious creator, you enlarge your church with the blessing of new life. Receive the praise of Vernon and Janet Clockengay at the birth of a great granddaughter, Raylynn Kay, born to Cassidy and Jonathan. We thank you that both mother and child are doing well, and we ask you to continue to strengthen them both. Bless this family out of your unfathomable grace and see to Raylan's entry into your family through the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. For all our cares, worries, and needs, hear us, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus, and for his name be kindly disposed and gracious to us. Amen. Please be seated for the reception of our gifts and offerings. You have been sharing in morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you heard Rev. Mark Thompson deliver this morning's message. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on the radio over WLLM 1370 a.m. or WLLM 105.3 FM or at www.zlclinc.org, where you will find links to the Internet stream and to Facebook Live. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 217-732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact our principal, Dr. Stephen Perry, at 217-732-3977. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us now rise for the singing of the offertory. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Welcome to the Lord. 
Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given unto death for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you on the world. Live heart in his peace. The first communion hymn is Thine the Amen, Thine the Praise. Found in the Lutheran Service Book, hymn number 680. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith into life everlasting, departing his peace. Amen. Lord, and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. Amen. The closing hymn is hymn number 348, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, hymn number 348 found in the Lutheran Service Book. Please be seated. Uh, first, just a reminder that we have Advent services starting Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Also, uh, in Walther Hall there, there are sign-ups for the journey to Bethlehem. I was looking at that this morning, the sign-up sheets. There's uh, a lot of items that they're asking to be donated, and maybe like uh, styrofoam cups and some other things that that uh, need to be drawn. So please stop by the card table there with the Journey to Bethlehem information on it and sign up to pitch in and give a hand with that. Um, today, a uh, servant event and game night for junior high and senior high youth groups. Um, first, uh, they're going to meet here at 3 o'clock, right? Meet here at 3 o'clock, going to go caroling uh, at the nursing homes and senior living centers. Then they're going to go to the Zion Lutheran School for a gift exchange. 
So what they're asked to do is bring a $10 gift card, and there's a, I think there's a game that goes along with that in uh, giving out the gift cards and trading them back and forth. But each person brings one $10 gift card, and then they're going to have gym time and refreshments following that. So there's no need to bring anything except for your singing voice and your gift card. Everything else will be provided. Uh, parents should pick up the youth groups, members at the school at 5 o'clock tonight. And then lastly, um, 1.30 to 2.30 is Sunday School Christmas program practice in the auditorium. So if your child wants to stay for the junior high, senior high youth group event, uh, they're welcome to stay for that 30 minutes here at the church. Um, also, I have a note, uh, must have come after the bulletin was printed. Um, St. Luke's Lutheran Church in rural San Joe's will host its annual chili and oyster stew supper on Monday, December. Now, I'm going to assume that's not mixed together. That's a, you can get oyster stew or chili, just, just I think so. Uh, Monday, December 4th from 3.30 to 6.30, uh, they've got chili, oyster stew, chicken salad, sandwiches, ham sandwiches, hot dogs, and a wide variety of desserts. It's just a free will donation for that. I know my grandma used to make oyster stew all the time. I certainly like that. That's uh, quite a good soup. Um, the church is located, well, we'll never remember this, but 157, 57 North County Road, 3600 East San Joe's, right? Go like you're going to Havana, turn left till you see the sign. It says San Joe's Lutheran Church up the hill, which I've always wanted to have a youth group event where we went sledding on that hill, by the way. That is a fantastic hill. And San Joe's has one of the most beautiful views out of their window uh, that there, there is in, in the county, I think. So it's a beautiful place over there. May the Lord bless all of you. May he bless your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.